Okay. <clears throat> so I'm interested in the GNU herd. It is an alternative kernel. Um, if you heard of GNU slash Linux, you've probably heard it called Linux. It really should be called GNU slash Linux. Um, people at GNU, behind the GNU project, they were instrumental in creating the GNU C library, the GNU compiler, the GNU assembler, a ton of other packages. Um, you can check them out at this website. They're pretty cool. Unfortunately, um, when they were trying to make their kernel for their operating system, they weren't able to pull it off. Uh, they still had some issues. They weren't, couldn't do it in time. Linus Torvalds wrote a kernel. He had it working in about a year. Um, much faster than the GNU's kernel was developing. So they decided they were going to go ahead and use the Linux kernel. Anyway, um, the GNU herd is still an interesting project. It's not as stable as the Linux kernel. It doesn't have as many features as the Linux kernel, but it does have a much smaller design. The Linux kernel is like 13 million lines of code. The GNU herd, by comparison, I think is like 50,000 lines of code. Um, so a lot of the things that are normally inside the kernel space in Linux, uh, like the device drivers, that's not the case for the GNU herd. Anyway, um, so I've got the GNU herd running right here. Yay, sweet. Um, and you'll see there's, it's running in a VM. So I'm running uh, GNU, I'm running Parabola, GNU slash Linux, um, which is the freed version of Arch. You can check out Parabola here. They're a pretty awesome distro. Anyway, check them out. Um, so I'm running uh, uh, the herd right now, um, but I also have it set up to where I'm SSH'd into it, and I can like uh, create a new directory. Um, actually, am I? I'm pretty sure I'm SSH'd into it. Yeah. Um, Joshua program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm definitely SSH'd into it. This is not my 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 uh, programming directory locally looks like this. It has all this Mozilla and stuff. This does not have Mozilla in it, so yeah. Okay, so I'm SSH'd um, into the herd. The reason I'm doing that, I have a really hard time working with the herd um, in a virtual machine. Um, I'm un 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 I am unable to install it physically on my computer uh, and if I did that, I don't even think I could use it, period. Um, so just some psh, some brute honesty. Um, if you're interested in messing with the herd, and you totally should, because it's, it's, it's really kind of cool, you're going to have some problems. Um, it only uses a file system, like the extension 2 file system, that has like been deprecated for years. The current version of that is extension 4. So there's only one file system that the GNU herd understands um, that it's like widely used. The Linux file, the Linux kernel by comparison has like several different file systems that you can choose from, and some of them are better, some of them are worse. A lot more, a lot more variety. Uh, I think the GNU herd has like a, uh, a limit of how much RAM you can have. I think it's something like approaching four gigabits. I think the last time I had read the herd wiki. Um, your partition table extension for um, on the herd can only support like 120 gigabits or something. I could be wrong. Um, more specifically, the herd, you're probably not going to have good sound support. You won't have USB support. It will only run on one core. It's, you're gonna, it's gonna crash randomly. You're gonna have issues with it. But here's the real question: Why am I interested in playing with it? Um, one thing that's really cool about it is the idea of a translator. Um, since a lot of your things that are normally, a lot of your system services are not in the kernel, now they're in user space, it makes it really easy to extend the herd in, in ways you might not have, have thought of before. Um, this idea is thought of as a translator. Um, so one example, and I, I wish I could show you this now, I've never actually used it, um, but one example is well, actually, there might actually be. Uh, let's see, there might be a way to do this. Advantages. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. 
technical advantages of the herd. I don't know what they are. Anyway, um, maybe I should like show you how um, to run the herd for yourself. Um, I would recommend not to install it because you're, you're probably not gonna be able to install it. You have to uh, set it up on a CD and it's probably just not gonna work because it just got issues. So probably the best way to do this is to follow this guide here. Um, and unfortunately, the, I don't know why, I don't know why they, they have this as the command, right? So for me locally, my uh, command looks like this. It's like QEMU system I386. It's like roughly the same command, but I guess Debian has this instead. So it's like the exact same arguments more or less. I've, I've tweaked it so like I can SSH into it and all that good stuff. But anyway, um, yeah. So that's how you would go ahead and um, get uh, the herd running inside a uh, VM. And then you can do all this other good stuff. Um, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to try the herd hacking guide, um, which I have pulled up over here. You can download online. Um, yeah, um, I guess I'll just try to explain you one, one, in an example of what a translator is. So uh, let's say, uh, am I going to go into programming? Oh, I can go to program. I have a programming directory. Small programs, sweet. I made small programs. Awesome. Um, let's see. Here. There we go. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's say I. Well, and I'm going to create this file instead. Um, where is that SSH? There it is. Programming. Small programs. Or, yeah, let's go into small programs. Let's say I, I make... Oh, I already have something. Cool. Uh, this might be... Oh, uh, okay, well. This might be a little less cool, but anyway. Um, so I'm trying to give you an example of a translator. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's go with uh, simple.xml. Yes, create the buffer. Okay, so what you could do, you could, um, with an XML file, um, what if I could, no, uh, I should have just made, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat here. Simple.html, yes, create the buffer, yes. So Emacs doesn't do this automatically, I'm just, I've set this up to do it this way. And I'm gonna rename the buffer, simple.xml. Cool. Wait, what? Yeah, simple XML. So here's what's nifty about um, the herd. So I've saved this file. Ba -ba -ba. I'm SSH'd. So right now, this screen is the exact same thing as this one, more or less. I'm, I'm SSH'd in the exact same area, I think. Yeah. So here's what's cool, right? Um, there is a translator that exists on the herd. I don't know how to do this. I, I could look it up, but you know, why waste time? Um, basically, you would run something like set trans. I think you would want it to be A for active, which means to run it right now, and it won't persist across reboots. And you, it's something like XML FS translator, and you would say simple dot XML. All right, you run this command. I don't. I'm pretty sure this isn't going to do anything. Let's find out, because I'm pretty sure it's like wrong, yeah, wrong set trans, whatever, wrong syntax, or whatever. I'm, I'm not even going to care. Set, I'm pretty sure the set trans is an actual command, but forget that for right now. Anyway, suppose this command worked. Then when I ran like cat, or when I ran, I could like, I could potentially run something like ls simple.xml, and ls would actually show me um, a directory tree that would uh, kind of look a little bit like this. It, you would see, I guess you would only, really? What mode, there we go. So you would you would essentially see like this, and then you could like CD into this HTML file, and you would see this. You would see, you'd LS again, right here, or where? So you would do like, um, uh, ls uh, simple 
index.xml, cool. Then you would do something like cd uh, simple.xml, and then you could do ls it again, and you would see this. You would see this down here, more or less. You'd see like the head and the body. And so then you could do something like uh, cd head, and then you would um, see you would see all these, you'd see all these metas when you when you ls again. So that's kind of the idea of a translator. It like takes underlying data of the file system and presents it in a different format, which is really cool. Um, this is possible to do in Linux. Um, the herd is better suited for this kind of, of trivial, crazy awesomeness. Anyway, that's kind of the overview of the herd. I'm gonna to try to dive into the hacking guide. This is gonna be really, really, really bizarre. Um, so, do your best to keep up, okay? <laughs> um, actually, first off, I'm gonna get rid of this simple. Thought. Don't give me this. Booyah. Okay, simple's gone. Um, so, cat. <laughs> I guess I wanted that. Um, we're gonna create it again. Never mind. Simple.xml. Or, no. Simple.html this time. Create buffer, auto insertion. It's done. Um, so cat simple.xml. Uh, cat. No such file or directory. Let's try it here. Cat simple.xml. Nope. Well, I thought it, maybe it's cat simple.xml. What do you mean no such? F oh, okay. Let's try cat simple dot html because that's actually what it is. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess I had already created this program before. Um, uh, I'll show you what it is. Cat dot c. So let me see if I can't find this here. Um, so this is telling you how random stuff. I've read this before, but I don't hardly understand any of this crap. Um, not that it's crap. Sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> um, so, dump a file, to standard output. This is, I think this is a cat. I think this is exactly what I have, more or less. Uh, that's all. Create a, yeah. Um, let's go, let's, let's double check. But I think this is exactly what I have right here. Give you source one, int main, file type f, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so cool. This is exactly what I have over here. Um, so this is a way to write the cat program, right, on Linux um, and on a lot of other random stuff. You can do, um, let me go to, I don't know where. Let's go to programming. I have files there. Uh, HTML that works. Um, kill them all. <laughs> really, I don't have anything there. That's sad. How about? Oh, actually, boom. Okay, so I can do cat. Oops, that HTML. I mean, yeah, this works on Linux as well. Um, and it uses the GNU C library. Um, normally, in the GNU C library, you would do it a little bit differently, um, but on the herd, since it's 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 not meant to be, it's not meant to work the exact same way as the standard Unixy way that the herd or that the Linux does it. So this is just the way of making cat on the herd. And I guess I've already done it before. I don't remember any of this stuff how it works, but I'm going to go ahead and try to follow the next example of creating a copy of a file in the herdish way. So this is literally going to be a video of me reading through this and copying it. It's going to be really boring or really fun, whichever, depending on how, how you want to think about it. So we're going to create a cp copy.c file. Yes, create this buffer. I know what I'm doing. Don't talk. Don't talk back to me. Yep, yes, yes. Oh, I'm such a good typist. Okay, uh, what is this? That's the, yeah, okay. Um, yes, I know what I'm doing. 
Look what you've raised, Mom! So, copy.c, we're copying a file in the herdish way. Very cool. Wow, this thing is super old. <laughs> yeah, gosh. I love the I love the herd developers. I think they're awesome. I, I've kind of been a jerk to them in the past, not really intentionally, but I have. Oh gosh, they just, it just needs so much work. Some some of the documentation is just really old. That's probably something I should try to help out with. Anyway, so to find GNU source one, you have to have this section in your C file in order to write any programs for the herd. Uh, in case you don't know, C is like the grandfather of all programming languages. It's still used widely today. And if you need to do like really low level stuff. Actually, what am I thinking? Boom. Look at how awesome I am. Yep, that was not bragging at all. Okay. Emacs. Include her.h. Include. F C N T L dot H. No idea what that is. Oop. Include standard input output dot H. No, that one is. Haha. <laughs> Used that one before. Include error nair dot H. It's error handling, I believe. Include error dot H. It's really funny. I'm going through and writing a C program when I did terrible in my C programming class in college, which I took twice, by the way. Um, so an arbitrary number. That's, oh yeah, this, this program, I guess, that I'm writing right now is not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna do proper error checking type stuff. So int main, int argument count, char pointer to an array we're using uh, GNU syntax which a lot of people don't like but they can go fall asleep on a couch for all I care file <laughs> yeah, I'm such a good insulter aren't I type number T R D amount comma W R amount no idea what these variables are for at the moment. Char buffer, I think that's the pointer in the buffer. Error T. Oh, just to brag about my editor. Uh, the reason this is like bouncing back and forth is because it's trying to tell me, hey, there's a there's a problem. You need to put a semicolon and it'll fix itself. Very cool. You should check out Emacs if you've never used Emacs before. It is an awesome, awesome editor. Um, if the argument count is not equal to three, so that means when when you run a program, uh, is, this, is this what is this? Is this the, yeah, this is the herd. I think I can't see it. There it is. Um, so uh, this would have an argument count of two, I think, because ls is the ls is the first argument. Well. Ls like I think I think it comes out this comes out to be two I think anyway so when you have like a, a, a continuous section of stuff you could do something like ls blah 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 that's one two three four argument or, or count but ls blah 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 makes no sense and my computer freaks out and tells me to die in in so many words okay go away thank you now. Argument count not equal to three. Error. One, comma zero. Such a badass. <laughs> Usage. Percent s. Input file. Output file. Comma rv zero. Okay. If I remember correctly, this percent s is basically uh, a placeholder and it's it's saying whatever this thing amounts to uh the, the string like the first argument uh oh yeah i think this is saying usage so 
this would pop out to be something like usage. I think this percent S would, why well, am I pointing at my finger? You can't see my finger. This percent S would turn into like CP. So usage, CP input file, output file. Oh, that's kind of cool. If I have that right, I think I have that right. That's error. Okay, now we're going to create a buffer. Um, uh, a buffer is is just is just a file, but more or less. Um, like right now, I, this is like the the copy.c is the file, and Emacs is viewing it in a buffer. Type. You know, that's kind of what a buffer. Is. That's if you if it helps you think about that. Um, malloc is a call to say, hey, we need some memory. And that's what malloc is doing right now. And um, we're storing that in this uh, buff. Buff. Where did I? Yeah, I did okay. Char buff. Uh, pointer to a region of memory, I think. It, basically a string, if I'm not mistaken. That's what, that's what buff is. Yeah, it's just a long string. Um, buff length is going to be the length of the file, I guess, that we're wanting to copy. So if buff is equal to null die ferociously, error one, zero, comma, out of memory. Oh, okay. I get saying if we, yeah, we're on our memory, die. <laughs> okay, now we're going to open the file. Star open the file. Okay, in equals file name lookup. ARGV1, comma, zero, read, comma. What the heck is if you're still watching this, you really need to get a life. <laughs> I don't know how you can find this entertaining. N is equal to mock port null. How do I find this entertaining? That's what's sad. Uh, okay. If 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 mock says we don't like you, we can't open up the file. I guess then do this thing. Error one, comma, error and error. Could not open percent s. Oh, and I'm sure there's someone out there asking, hey, why don't you just copy the whole thing in there? Well, I read a blog post somewhere that said if you're gonna write a command program type thing, don't just copy and paste. You'll no, it's much better to actually write it out and perform nice annotations as you go along. Okay, now we're looking at file name lookup. We're looking for a file. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, arg v two. I think it's a zero or no. I think it's an O. Let's say it's an O. o right. O create O or zero. Sorry, zero trunk comma zero six. Or, oh, oh, okay, it's definitely, yeah, that's an O. That's a zero. Okay, so this is an O. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. O. Uh, so the, that's where the file's going, maybe? Yeah, there we go. Um, if out is equal to mock port null error one comma error error comma could not open percent s comma rgb two okay so now we're going to do the copying of the file i suppose while one wow this guy is it's an odd way to do it Let's, yeah probably a better programmer than I am. Okay, we're going to read. Read. Let's see here. Error is equal to input, output, read, in, comma, and buff, comma, and rd amount, comma, negative one, comma, buff length. Cool. If error, oops. Oops, error. If error, then error one, comma, error, comma, could not read from file. If only my programming pr 
prowess was this easy as just sort of copying what someone else has done. It can be really hard writing a program if you've never written it before and yeah, programming is a little bit like uh, sculpting a sculpture out of marble with your bare hands. Normally it's fun, sometimes. Especially if you get paid to do it. Right. Um, right. Okay, PTR equals a buff. What does... So this is saying... Okay, if there's a problem, you can't read from the file. If RDM... Oh, if you hit the end of the buffer, you're done, I guess. Now we're going to write, I guess. Pointers equal to the buff, whatever that means. Do. Error is equal to input output right. Out. Pointer. RD amount. Comma negative one. And WR amount. Um, if, if you're curious what this little ampersand sign means, that means dereference the pointer. Uh, if you're curious what a pointer <laughs> means, a uh, pointer is a programming syntax thingy that points to a region of memory. If you don't know what that means, consult a, a book. <laughs> right to file. Pointers are kind of tough to deal with at times. As a matter of fact, I, I rarely use them just because I am not that amazing of a programmer. RD amount minus equals WR amount. Okay. Pointer plus equals WR amount. Oh, he's got a do. Oh, I hate do whiles. Let's see here. Do this. I'm, I've never used do whiles. It just seems like a weird. I don't know. I, I would just use whiles. So do this whole thing while this is true. Now, let's see here. Uh, this is for the while one. Okay. Mock port deallocate mock task self in. Port deallocate mock task self out turn zero. What do I have? Is he missing a? I think he's missing a closing bracket. Here's your do. Here's your while. Yeah, here's your do while. This one is for the while. While one. And then he has. The only, only other bracket is the int main. So what do I have two? Maybe. Let's see here. While one. Here's your do while. I don't think this one needs one. If. Yeah, if argument not equal three. So this I can get rid of. Yeah, and I can get rid of this, I think. Yeah. Okay, sorry whoever wrote the herd hacking guide. You were correct. I was wrong. Um, let's see here. Give me just a second. Okay, so now we're going to try to understand what exactly is going on here, because this is crazy confusing. Uh, okay, the interesting parts are out equals file name lookup, this file, this line. 
Here we open the output file and create it. If it does not exist, permissions being uh, read, write. Okay, so they're creating a file. That's what the out line is doing. Create a file if it does not exist. Awesome. So, So we're reading if input output read if error you couldn't read from the file if we reach the end of the file we break I guess as we said above we couldn't read any bytes indicates reach in the file it does not mean that there's no data available at the moment if we would read from dev random for example there would be no data to read at the moment this call would not tell us there's no data but would block until new data is available whatever that means. Um, so now it's writing. Oh, okay, that's what this thing is for, writing the data. So it's reading it from the file and then it's outputting the file. There's no guarantee that input write accepts all data we attempt to feed it into immediately, so we might try a retry, but only if the data was not accepted until now. No idea, no idea what that means. So I finally want to create a note that GNU herd system has no reason not to use the nice non-standard extension of GNU. For example, nested functions are used frequently. Cool, thank you. Um, wait, how do I compile this sucker? I think I'll have to go back to the cat example. Unless I have a make file to find. How cool would that be if I had a make file to find? Um, hello. I don't think I do. No, I do not. Um, a make file is just a, a file that helps you compile all your programs super easily. Um, let's see here. What does this look like? Okay, moving on, moving on. I might just be able to do GCC the normal way. I think I feel like there's. Oh, that's not it. Okay. Creating a file. I saw by deallocating the port. Mm, da, da, da. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna have to try to compile this like I would normally compile a program. Um, so, GCC. dot c output file cp let's see if this works looks like it's trying to do something in function main invalid suffix on integer constant i looks like i made that a zero read it's line 33 yeah this, this needs to be an o apparently that compiler sure is good, eh? Let's try it again. Cool. So we now have uh, a very simple, allegedly, a, a, a herd CP copy type thing. Okay. Uh, let's try it out. We use the local copy program. Simple, actually. I think, I think let's, let's try it with this one. It should give us, yeah, remember that I told you this is what it would look like? So cool, it's telling me you need to specify input file and an output file. So copy, uh, simple.html, and we're gonna change, we're gonna copy that to copy.html. Boom, and it worked. Is this diff a thing here? Sweet, so diff, simple HTML, and copy HTML. No differences, cool. Cat copy.html, cool. Remove copy.html. Cool. So yeah, um, that is how you can mess with the herd. Um, I hope you found that helpful. Have a good day. Uh, tell your mother you love her. Goodbye.